Welcome to the FreeBSD software picks for this month, where we try to find some of the little gems that are available from the FreeBSD software repositories. Burger Space is a clone of the classic game Burger Time which was originally released in 1982. And you may have seen it in the arcades if you went in there during that period. It was also released on some early home consoles and portable game systems. And luckily, here we have it available for free in FreeBSD. Well, at least a, a version of it. And of course, really, there's going to be some differences, some, uh, some alterations. But overall, it's not a bad... Uh, implementation of a great game, I think. It's a simple platform game where you assemble a burger uh, at the bottom. And speaking of the bottom, there's some basic commands. You've got uh, pause, save game, load game, and toggle full screen, etc. Simple simple commands with arrow keys and the control key uh, to shoot. So, you know, if you're like me, and he, I mean, you know, if you're not 100% at gaming, uh, I, I, even I could do it. Uh, not very well, but I, even I could still do it. So, yeah, let's get cracking. So you walk all over the uh, the components of the game like I'm doing here, and uh, just uh, test my spray, and they drop to the bottom, uh, watching the uh, condiments and the fillings. So you do your base first, and, and uh, oh, uh, hey, oh. No, I've got a feeling that that... No, never mind. Yeah, uh, your pepper doesn't last forever. So here I am. Tried to assemble it, and not doing too bad. I think you get, uh, and that's it. Well, you know, that's the furthest I've got in this game, and I'm quite happy with that. Next up, we've got Photo Flare. Now, Photo Flare is kind of like, if you imagine, a compromise between the simplicity of Microsoft Paint and Paint Shop Pro, if you're old enough to remember what that was like. It's not up to Photoshop standards, of course, but then again, you know, did not expect it to be. You've got basic menu where you can save and load, you can copy images. I mean, this is really just to be touching up photographs rather than creating from scratch. And you've got various modes that you can change. Moving the picture around, crop, change canvas size. You know, just, just manipulate a picture. Just alter the colours and the colour grading and various whatnots like that. It's not too bad, not over complicated. And you can adjust the uh, saturation. I know nothing about all these things. I just bung a, a picture on and change things around, so I don't bother changing any of the hues, etc. But it's there if you want it. And one of the great things about this is the filters available. There's quite a few, as you can see here. Um, Grayscale, change all painting. So it... It's not. Do you know what I mean? It's not. It's not so simplistic that you can't do anything, but it's not overly complicated either. And to me, that's that's a good compromise. So you got your basic controls, some automatic uh, unbatching, and we'll have a look at the about and its version one point six point one three, community edition. Well, it means that there's a, a professional edition somewhere. Probably at that address there. Right, so let's have a look. Uh, there's the basic controls at the top. You've got your basic things. You've got a lot of the what was available down the drop-down menu is available for quick access on these two lines. And it continues there. We can swap colours, change background, foreground, etc. You've got palette, which shifts from basic to uh, quite sophisticated, actually. Not too bad. And you've got your basic tools, you've got your dropper and your wizard. And I think that's paint. A little paint bucket, yep. And cutting and tools and brushes, etc. Smudging and blurring. And you can rescale there. You can create a blank work area or a blank canvas, as it were. So I should imagine that if you've got some smaller pictures that you want to bring in to create a, a, a mosaic or something similar you can do. You can specify pixels in inches, in resolution, which only goes up to 99. 
uh, 99.99, which is, why not 100? Well, there you go. So let's open, before we uh, before I go off on a tangent, let's open an example. And I can see one called uh, Photograph there. Hopefully that's the right one. And it is. It's a wonderful wool exchange in Bradford in West Yorkshire in the UK. It's a very gothic looking building. And you can zoom in and out, uh, basic controls like that, using the mouse wheel. Or you can set the, uh, the zoom manually if you want to do it via the drop-down menu. And we'll have a look at the various filters, because I think they're more visually represented. You can change it to black and white, which is a wonderful feature. That looks really good. You can uh, old photograph when it decides. There you go. So it gives you that kind of a black and white or sepia uh, image effect. I like that. That's good. Or you can go straight for uh, sepia there. Kind of more orange to it, I think. So if you want that, change. Uh, let's have a look. You can. You can make it look black and white, uh, as in a newspaper print. Oh, I like that. That's really nice. I like that. You get some good effects with that. Another one you can choose is oil painting, which, yeah, well, with this particular one, it doesn't big of a change. Charcoal. Now, that's good. I like that. And let's have a look. Solarite. Is it Solarite? It's like kind of inverse of things. Which is, uh, I like that. It's like an old effect from Doctor Who in the, uh, back in the day when they used to have the Daleks shoot you. You can also add text to the picture. It's a very basic text editor. It's not going to win over awards, but if you want to like label something, you can. So yeah, overall, uh, a wonderful little piece of software. Highly recommended if you just want to edit some basic pictures or photographs. Next, we've got Q speakers. Now, I'll be honest with you. Uh, what do you mean, honest with you? In most cases, this is true. Um, I'm not 100% sure what this is. I think what it is, and the reason why I chose it is because the concept of having uh, on FreeBSD the ability to, you put, you, you kind of like design a, um, a speaker cabinet, really, for a set of speakers that you might have. Now that he said, well, why do you want to do that? Well, let's say for you, you're a, an audio aficionado. Uh, I know there's quite a few out there who might be watching. Uh, Joy in particular, he knows who he is. Um, sound is a, an art form to some people. So they might buy speakers based on a certain uh, characteristics or power or, or the way that they vibrate and the various knickknacks like that. And of course, if you put them in the wrong cabinet or a badly fitted cabinet or badly designed speaker case, it's, it's not going to sound good. So this way you can input uh, using this program. You can get um, a predefined view of what some speakers are. And it's just got basic menu uh, there. And you can export, which we'll be doing in a bit. And there's a version 1.6.8. And what this enables you to do, like I say, you can uh, like you you put your vendor and your model number, and it gives you the the curve of the sound drop off or the sound climb. I don't know, what, the sealed volume frequency response, whatever that means, and it will give you that, and then you can choose to optimize it, and then that optimization is what it recommends the cabinet should be. <laughs> and but so like we put, um, I don't know. Let's have a look. A manufacturer JVC. And model, I don't know. I don't know means and else on this. Um, that one there. And you can see there's the uh, the volume uh, frequency response. And then you got your uh, various other graphs. But say, for instance, we... Uh, you can change the volume enclosure. So no doubt, um, if you want to say how much it echoes or vibrates, I have no idea. But if you press optimize, it will give you a little graph like that, then that's what you need to export by the 3D uh, wonderful little program OpenSCAD or is it OpenSCAD? Hmm. So you, you export it to that and you can import it and it's more like it's like a basic CAD program really 
So we take the information that we just generated there, and we'll just open the other one, open uh, SCAD. Open SCAD. That's a strange name. And it is, I'll just uh, drag that over. Make that a bit bigger. And hopefully we can, because it worked, maybe that's, I tried this out before and it, it seems to work. There we go. So there is what it recommends, or rather, that the Q speaker recommends for that particular speaker. So there's a basic uh, view of it. And if you zoom in a bit more. Do you know it's weird? It's like weird movement. And if we go down to render, it'll just give you a very basic image of the speaker box or the cabinet or the case. And there's one I did uh, earlier. More traditional, perhaps. You've got a little woofer at the bottom, a subwoofer. And we'll just render that. There we go. So, yeah. And then from that, I mean, I don't know. You could uh, take out your design, the measurements, or get one created to fit the speakers you've got at optimum sound level. Yeah. I just, I'd, like I say, I'll be honest, I don't know that. I just, uh, To me, speakers, just you switch them on, the sound comes out. But if you know what you're after, this could potentially be a fantastic uh, program for you. Anyway, there's just uh, some of the ones that I found, some of, the ones, some of the ones that you might find interesting and hopefully find useful. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.